Hi guys, Jimmy Fluke here for Apex Racing Team and today we're going to take a look at the balanced performance of the GT3 cars for the iRacing Spa 24 this upcoming weekend. Um, our guys are hard at prep for that and we're also hard at prep here in the Sim Center preparing to uh, open the doors for customers to come in and have a try at our rigs. So without further ado, we're going to get straight into the Sim Room and take a look at uh, what I think of the balanced performance for the upcoming event. So let's get stuck in. Okay, so I'm now sat in my sim rig and uh, first thing uh, to get stuck into is looking at the balance of performance that iRacing have provided for the Spa 24. As we can see here, uh, we've got 1% fuel taken out of everything except for the Ferrari and the Ford GT with weight added to the Mercedes, uh, so 12 kilos for that and 6 kilos added to the Porsche. Uh, quickly touch on is the Ford GT, uh, unfortunately that car is not even really worth considering, it's uh, been sort of neglected over the last few years, so uh, we will not be covering that. In the blue here we've got uh, the Mercedes and in the red is the BMW and also I will say this was done uh, before the BOP was announced, um, so beforehand the Mercedes was probably the clear uh, strongest car uh, available to us. Um, super strong in the middle of the lap here, so um, in particular turns 8 through to turn 12 effectively which is sort of that middle section of the lap uh, all the sort of long sweeping corners uh, the Mercedes was very very strong um, whereas the BMW sort of came in quite uh, handy um, in the traction zones somewhat surprisingly uh, given the inherent nature of the car um, and a little bit sort of in high speed stuff uh, it was a little bit quicker in a straight line so moving on now to looking at the Audi R8 LMS GT3. It does sort of uh, struggle over the course of the lap, especially as we sort of see here in Puyon. Um, the high speed stability of the mid-engine cars on this current build just doesn't lend itself to uh, tremendous performance. And so the mid-engine uh, cars do struggle here. Whereas turn one, a traction zone where more of the weight is on the rear of the car, um, it will suit it a lot more. But over the course of the lap, um, even with uh, the uh, weight penalty applied to the Mercedes, it will definitely be a stronger option than, than the Audi as well. So the big weakness of the McLaren um, is that to get speed out of the car, you need to make the car quite loose, and then the car will get looser as the run goes on. So it becomes very, very unstable quite quickly. It does, again, have fantastic traction, as we can see here in turn one but the middle of the lap, it's um, all Mercedes ultimately, um, outside of the, the final chicane, where again, the McLaren does sort of lean into its strengths, where its traction is its strong suit, but there's not enough traction zones around the lap for the McLaren to be a viable option. Uh, the Ferrari is not the worst option by any means here. Um, it uh, does lack a little bit in tire wear, is it? So that's its main weakness. It's, it's really strong over one lap typically, um, but after five laps or so, uh, the, the front tires seem to really, really struggle. It does have its strong points though. Again, uh, with it being mid-engined, it will inherently have much better traction. Okay, so moving on now to the uh, Porsche 911 GT3R. Very similar actually in uh, outright speed compared to the Ferrari, um, about a tenth or so of the Mercedes. Uh, and again, similar sort of areas and where it's strong and weak. So naturally, as you would expect with the car, um, with the engine in the rear, the traction is going to be fantastic. So your turn one and final chicane, both very, very strong. The recent uh, patch to improve the rear downforce of this car has helped it massively and does make it a little bit more of a viable option especially over one lap. Um, so things like tyre wear, um, I did allude that the Ferrari was generally quite weak on its tyres. Um, the Audi and the Lamborghini will be quite strong but on their front tyres more so than their rears. So even though the wear might be better on uh, both of those cars, uh, the rear tires will wear out more so you might start to lose balance over the course of a run, especially if you're double stinting tires. Um, cars like the BMW and the Mercedes that are front engined tend to keep their balance a little bit better. They might not have the best wear rate, but if the car is still stable to drive over the course of you know, two hours, especially if you're not uh, taking any tires in a pit stop, then that'll be beneficial to you. Um, in terms of overall stability, uh, again, the Audi and the Lamborghini, and to some extent the McLaren as well, are a little bit on the unstable side. 
or a team of lower eye rating, the front engine cars I find um, are going to be your better um, options for this race. Not only are they both quick, uh, but they're also much more stable to drive for uh, the 600 odd laps or so um, that you guys will be racing in. The ARA data packs that I've uh, stepped you through here are available to all members of the Apex Racing Academy. Um, the referral link uh, to get 10% off your first sign up with the Apex Racing Academy is in the description below. So um, for the ART entry, we've decided on what we're driving. I'm sure you can probably figure out that it's either the Mercedes or the BMW. Uh, the exact choice will be revealed later on in the week. So let us know in the comments what you're running this weekend and do you agree or disagree with my assessment of uh, how things are shaping up for this weekend. Thanks for watching and we'll see you guys in the next one.